we should all really be worried about what's happening in the 200 meters. Not for any bad reasons, not for anything controversial, but simply for the fact that Sharika Jackson may very well go on to dominate this event in a way that we have never seen before. Now, at the Rabat Diamond League out in Morocco, Sharika Jackson took to the track in the 200 meters for her second 200 of the season, as she already ran 22.25 out in Jamaica a couple weeks ago. Here in Rabat though, she ran 21.98 seconds, a meet record, a season's best, not a world lead. Julian Alfred currently has a world lead at 21.91 seconds, but this was a very scary performance and very significant for a couple reasons. One of the main reasons is that this is the earliest Sharika Jackson has ever run so sub 22 seconds in her entire career. Now, prior to this, the earliest that she had run sub 22 seconds was in June at the Rome Diamond League last year. Of course, we know what happened to go on at the end of 2022, 21.45 seconds, second fastest time in the history of the event. Sharika Jackson is on pace to do something amazing. We've already seen her run 10.8 seconds twice in the 100 meters, which is also the fastest she's ever run early on the season in the 100. So for her to replicate that in the 200 in terms of this early season performance, and this early season form really shows that she is going for something big. I think I saw some interviews. She's talking about really, really shaking things up in the 200 and, you know, in all the events and whatever she runs this year. So I am very much looking forward to seeing. Last year, after the World Championships, I thought she was actually going to be able to break the world record towards the end of the Diamond League. Now, she didn't get anywhere close to it, but looking at this year, it's really hard to say that 21.3 is not in the cards. Maybe not the world record, right? Maybe 21.39 or whatever it may be. But in my opinion, I think the world record is very much in danger this year. Now, I want to highlight what happened behind her. Antonique Strand, who competes for the Bahamas, she ran a massive personal best of 22.15 seconds. Now, prior to this, her personal best dated back to 2013 when she ran 22.32 seconds. So for her to take over a tenth of a second off her personal best, after so long running on the circuit and being a professional, this is an amazing performance for her. Now, what I really want to talk about, I'm going to talk about it later on, possibly, is the state of the women's 200 meters, where we have Sharika Jackson, and then right now, it's looking like everyone else, right? Gabby Thomas, unfortunately, not looking too well right now, but I think she's definitely going to pick things up. Abby Steiner looking okay as well, right? Um, but there's a couple women who really should be in the fold, maybe not looking as good as they are right now. So Sharika Jackson, really the head, and then everyone else. Anthony Strahan, with his personal best, really opened herself up to being in metal contention behind her though tamari davis of course if you watch this channel you've been following tamari davis she just hit a personal best of 22.30 seconds in this 200 meters now she is a good pick right now for the women's 100 meter team likely um in the 200 not so sure if she's gonna run it if she does she's also probably a good pick for the team this shows that she is making some huge progress in addition kayla white finished fourth place in 22.52 seconds so a great women's 200 again do not sleep on Sharika Jackson. If you have been already sleeping on her, I don't know where you've been. She's going to do something crazy this year. Now, over to the men's 100 meter dash, Fred Curley versus Marcel Jacobs is billed as a, it never happened, right? Jacobs didn't show up. We'll see if he actually shows up in Rome. Still waiting to see. But Fred Curley does what he is known to do. He managed to run down this field, get the win in 9.94 seconds. Another kind of day in the park for him, another kind of day, day at work, right? He's really been tearing things up. And right now, he is showing that he is the clear number one in the 100 meter dash. Now, it's clear but it is slight i don't want to say that he can't lose but he is very much you know ahead of the rest of the pack but behind him we did see akani simbine he came up for second place in a good run of 9.99 seconds but fernand omanyala came up for third place in 10.05 seconds Honestly, I don't know what was happening in this race. Omanyala was like looking at Curly at 30 meters into the race. I don't even know what was going on, but Omanyala, I really want to see him pick things up. Of course, he has that talent. Of course, he has huge potential, but he hasn't yet shown that he can really run very fast outside of Africa. Granted, he ran in Atlanta. He did run very well in the 150 meter dash. Um, so want to see him do well. This just race wasn't it for him, but we're going to see what goes down the rest of the year. Behind them, let's see Bogo, Trayvon Bramel, Johan Blake. They, they finished out the uh, fourth five and six places unfortunately not amazing races from these guys i probably expected a little bit more from tobogo as well as trayvon bromel but you know we're still early season tobogo has already run very fast bromel this was his opener so 10.10 .10 for an opener from bromel i think is a pretty good indicator of what he's going to be able to progress towards and you know likely get on that team and then potentially medal at world championships again but want to highlight fred curly he is the favorite for the 100 meter dash once again in 2023 don't ask about jacobs we'll see when they actually run if jacobs can keep pace now the men's 110 meter hurdles this was a massively stacked field first of all i don't even know what was going on with the starts and you know 
This was a super confusing race. Things were happening in the crowd. There was like whistling. The starter was going. I don't know what was going on. It's kind of unfortunate when you see these things go on in a race and in a high quality competition. We're not talking about a little meet, you know, down in somewhere in the middle of America or, you know, a little meet somewhere, you know, out in Europe, right? This is a Diamond League meeting. This is a high quality meeting. And, you know, things like this unfortunately shouldn't happen, but we did finally get the race to go down and it turned out to be a pretty good race. Broad Bell, he has been on the rise the past year or so, and he got the win here in 13.08 eight seconds very notably into a negative 1.3 meters per second headwind that is pretty significant that shows that he is probably close to sub 13 second shape and he is very much on pace to personal best he's very much on pace to you know make the world championship team and potentially medal broad bell is a problem but don't let that downplay what grant holloway did as well 13.12 seconds in second place lost a little bit at the end but grant holloway he is mr consistent when it's time to show up of course last year there was a false start right hansel parchment got injured so people want to say that grant holloway you know didn't really win the world championship but it's whatever he won the world championship fair and square and in 2019 he won against a good field there so it doesn't matter he's a double world champion and he knows how to perform against the best fields he's number two all time in the 110 meter hurdles so this is just another setup for a great rivalry between these two guys and between the rest of the guys as well right we had hansel parchment come up for third in 13.24 seconds of course the tokyo olympic champion he's gonna always be in the fold devin allen 13.25 seconds for season's best in fourth place so i'm loving seeing all these guys going head to head i want to see a lot more of it as the season progresses and again look out for this great rivalry between broad bell grant holloway throwing trey cunningham parchment devin allen hurdles is going to be on fire all throughout the season on the women's side in the hurdles but in the 400 meter hurdles this was a shamir little show shamir little 53.95 seconds for season's best nothing too crazy but she's been really tearing up the track in the 400 getting a couple wins getting a couple great performances for her to come out here and get the win over a pretty high quality field right you had clayton you had salman you had russell even delilah muhammad gianna woodruff this is a pretty good field that shamir little was able to get the win over of course no city mclaughlin Lavroni, no femke bull no Britton wilson but this is a great field shamir little is a mainstay in the 400 meter hurdles and this is a confidence booster if anything so keep a lookout for shamir little i'm really looking forward to seeing what happens as the rest of the season progresses in the men's 400 meter dash this was just another Steven Gardner show, 44.70 seconds. Now, he already ran 44.4 just a couple, about a week ago in Bermuda, so he is just consistently rolling. Coming back from his injury, he's feeling good, he's feeling healthy, and these wins show that he is ready to you know, go back to get on top of that podium in that 400-meter dash. Vernon Norwood in second, Rasheed McDonald in third, right? This was a pretty good field, but of course, we're looking at Steven Gardner to see if he's able to get back on top of that podium, win the gold medal again, maybe even get under his personal best of 43.5 four once again who knows but keep a lookout for steven gardner as the season progresses now let's finish off with that women's triple jump again one of my favorite events of the entire sport this was a actually amazing amazing competition we asked perez hernandez come away with the win in 14.84 meters a world leading performance just on the cusp of 15 meters almost breaking that barrier this is a personal best for her as well this is a great performance from perez hernandez right a lot of the cuban women are making some huge strides to really cement themselves in the triple jump behind her though marina beck romanchuk second place in 14.65 meters she's already jumped 15 meters last year so she's getting back into the groove of things she may be a 15 meter jumper again later on this year and then third place shanika ricketts 14.53 meters so like i kind of spoke about in my preview these women showed up into the mid to high 14 meter jumps and they really are proving that they want to be competitive now yulamar rojas was not in this competition i think she's going to be jumping at a couple other diamond leagues later on in the season so keep a lookout for what she does she of course is probably the triple jump favorite but this is a very high quality field people sleep on the triple jump but this is one of the premier events this, low key the triple jump is you know approaching another golden age i would not be surprised to see a lot of women in the 15 meter barrier range so keep a lookout for the women's triple jump i am loving this event so go in the comments let me know what you thought about the robot diamond league of course i just spoke about the sprints i just spoke about the triple jump there was the high jump there was the distance races right um el bacali set an amazing performance in the men's steeplechase but let me know what your favorite performance from the robot diamond league is and let me know what you're looking forward to as the rest of the diamond league season progresses we're just getting started so a lot more to go in 2023 make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel back again next time thanks for watching